Hello everyone, welcome to the Redmen TV and your latest Liverpool news update. My name is Dan Club and I'm going to be here for the next half an hour, give or take a few minutes either side, to talk about some of the latest things happening in the world of the Reds. And I want you to help me as we do so, of course. Get your comments in, get your questions in, whatever it may be, whatever you want to talk about, just feel free to ask away. I can't promise I'll read them all, I can't promise I'll answer them all, but I'll do my very best. And to begin with, let's get through some of your hellos. Um, hello. Hello to Trigger Rich. Um, how are we, mate? UK. Hope you are well. Andy Murphy, likewise. How are you doing? Um, this name, I've seen this name a few times doing these. I'm not even going to read it out. Incapier in is your comment. Um, yeah, I, I'd like that. I've seen a few different reports on Incapier over the past few days as well. Nothing particularly substantial. Nothing necessarily worth delving too deep into right now. I've seen a couple of reports saying we possibly could be looking at him for next summer. Who knows? Um, um, but yeah, some more uh, comments, some more hellos from everyone. Everyone's in a good mood, clearly. Um, Sarah Melling says, hey, Abel wants to go to Bayern. Yeah, there is some Bayern talk as well. I want to come to that news in just a couple of moments. Um, but before I do, hello, Craig. How are you doing, mate? Hope you are well as well. It's Friday, of course. Everybody should be well. Everybody should be happy um, because it is Friday. Trigger is doing well because he's in South Africa. A lovely place of the world, a lovely part of the world, rather. Tell me exactly where you are in South Africa, mate. We've got Rob Rudy as well, just below. He is in Pittsburgh um, in the USA. Obviously, a mate of Joe's. Um, the biggest fan of America, I know. MK Elliott played amazing for the under-21s. Yeah, I want to touch on Harvey Elliott and the under-21s and a few other of the Reds who were involved in international action last night. Um, but to begin with, we've got, um, I, I want to say a sad story, but that is probably a bit too far, really. Um, before we do, Papa Z, one of our members, greetings. Hello, mate, hope you are good. Um, yeah, so Andy Robertson. That's where we begin. So I mentioned a few Reds were uh, involved in international action last night, and one of them was Andy Robertson, captain of Scotland, of course. Scotland were in Spain looking to gain qualification to Euro 2024. A point would have been enough, and a point still will be enough for Scotland. So it looks like they will be there. The Tartan army will be at the Euros in full force. But Andy Robertson, unfortunately, was involved in a awkward fall with Unai Simon, the Spanish goalkeeper. Um, Scotland obviously went eventually went on to lose the game 2-0 as well. And I've seen that controversy about the VAR and the Scott McTominay, but I'm not here to talk about that. I've had enough of VAR. Certainly when it comes to international footy, I do not care anywhere near enough to spend even another minute speaking about that. Um, but Andy Robertson fell awkwardly. I think it was the end of the first half. I actually played five or side myself last night and when I come out, went straight on my phone and just seeing pictures of Andy Robertson like with his arm in like a make, makeshift cast sleeve type thing walking around the pitch. Um, has been confirmed by James Pierce as a dislocation. Uh, he tweeted late last night saying yeah, Andy Robertson dislocated his shoulder against Spain he will fly home and undergo a scan on Friday obviously today is Friday so we haven't got the results of that scan just yet um dislocations of awkward ones you never quite know how it could be rapid like he could be back within like a week or two or you could be more like four or five possibly even six weeks depends on sort of the damage that's been done while when you did it and how easy it was to get back in and all that kind of stuff it can be a really complicated matter or it could be very straightforward um lots of you will know i play cricket a lot and i've seen numerous dislocations in my life often of just fingers and stuff like that and i've seen people get the fingers popped back in and they carry on playing I've also seen people get the finger popped back in and haven't seen them again for like three or four weeks. So, yeah, not quite sure exactly sort of the time frame of Robertson yet. I think there's still another like 10 or so days left of international duty, more really. So that has stood us in relatively good stead, I guess, in terms of this and sort of our hope of getting Robertson back sooner than later when it comes to Liverpool matches, of course. But I think from a positive point of view, just on Robertson before we look at how we might deal with it, I think the fact that he's obviously getting the best care with Scotland, like the physio was straight on to him, the picture there that I've just showed you, the physio is sort of helping him off, keeping his arm very still, making sure he's not moving it too much. He'll have got the best care thereafter in the dressing room, you would imagine. So every precaution, every sort of possible measure would have been in place to make sure he got the best possible treatment. And likewise, when he gets back to Liverpool for that scan, he will get the best possible rehab. And like I said earlier, dislocations aren't the end of the world when it comes to injuries. I hope I'm not sort of 
talking myself into a corner here and it turns out it's a really bad one. He can't play for like six, seven weeks or something mad. But I remain optimistic, glass half full, that yes, he's dislocated his shoulder. Yes, it's highly unlikely we see him in the derby and possibly a game or two after that. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we're not talking of too long a layoff for Andy Robertson because... The alternatives are Kostas Timikas goes in at left back. Now, that is the most likely alternative, of course, because you've got a backup left back. You've got a high quality backup left back as well. International football of himself. Greece play Republic of Ireland later on tonight. So let's all hope and pray that nothing happens to Kostas Timikas, of course. But I think in terms of Jürgen Klopp, <coughs> excuse me. He would want to just go Timakas straight in, so you don't have to change too much in the system. You don't have to mess around with all the plans you've had for like all preseason, the start of this season, etc. Timakas in the preseason was sort of doing the inverted stuff when Trent wasn't on the pitch, so. I don't think we're going to see him doing that. I think we'll see a very natural, normal left-back type job and obviously tuck it in a little bit when Trent does go wandering. I, Simicas, regular viewers, listeners will know, I'm not his biggest fan. I, I'm going to put it like that because I think he's a very good footballer. Let's sort of underline everything I'm about to say with that. I think he is a very good footballer, obviously. But what it is for me is whenever he has had opportunities and he's about to get another one because, like I say, Robertson looks like he's going to miss at least one, two, three games potentially. I think whenever he gets these chances to really sort of stake a claim and sort of be the man to take the shirt, he's never really grabbed it. And he signed a new contract recently. And I always wonder when this lad's very much in the prime of their career, like Tim McCass is, like, is he happy just playing Carabao Cup, Europa League, possibly FA Cup footy? And he might be. And he's at Liverpool Football Club, so he's living my and probably a lot of your dreams. So I can't really argue with it too much. And he's getting paid an inordinate amount of money to do so. So it's a bit silly to say what you're up to, mate, go and like play footy regular. But I do wonder where the sort of the motivation is because when he first signed for us from Olympiacos, I thought, okay, you've clearly come in thinking you can take the shirt of Andy Robertson. And at first you think, okay, show us what you've got. And he's fine, he's good, but he's never really, you know, kicked on and took that chance and gone, no, you know what, I'm playing now, this is mine. Like a lot of lads have done down the years for Liverpool, they've got a chance and they've gone, no, you're not getting back in, mate, this is me now. Like, injuries and opportunities don't come around that often. And when they do, you've got to make sure you go, right, this is me now, best of luck getting back in this side. And he's never... He's never done that. And for a Liverpool perspective, having a very good backup left back, one as good as Costa Simicas, is brilliant. Like, I'm made up, he belongs to us, similar to Kelleher. I'm made up, our backup goalie is boss, likewise with the left back. But I don't know, from a personal perspective, from sort of a competitive standpoint, the way I would be and the way I'd almost like my footballers to be is like, no, I'm not happy with this. I want to play more. I want to be the guy. And it always felt like, Every summer, basically, since he arrived, I've been like, will he sort of angle for a move here? Does he want to play more? But apparently not. Anyway, some more of your comments. Uh, Dan says, sorry, Sam says, Dan, don't tell the others, but more, you're, you're my favourite Redmen host. Now, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that. Joe will be made up. I brought that up. I imagine he's already taken a photo of me reading it. If not, he might have done that. I've just said it. But genuinely, one of our members there, Sam Whitwell. Thank you so much, mate. I really do appreciate that. Uh, Cole Joe. That's an interesting name. That's kind of backwards. Um, that's a massive loss. He won't be back in a week, mate. No, he won't be back in a week. No, no two ways about that. Um, like I say, he's, oh, he's, he's out the derby. Like, he's not playing the derby. Um, I think we've got Europa League against Toulouse after that. So, he probably wouldn't have played that anyway. And then, probably that next Premier League game, is it Forest? I can't imagine to be back for that. But I'm, as you probably already imagine, very optimistic. I wonder whether sort of in like two, three weeks' time, possibly. Possibly. Uh, Denzel Reddy says, get well, our Celtic warrior. Yeah, absolutely. Our Celtic warrior, I should say. He wouldn't want me using the word Celtic. Um, Abinash Samaf says, endo to get a starting role after the break. Quite possibly. And the McAllister 6 stuff is really interesting. And I seen last night he played, he had a really good game for Argentina. I seen some of the uh, ratings on him this morning, raving about how well he played. Um, and he was the deepest line midfielder for Argentina as well. So he's doing it for his international team, albeit very different. They beat Paraguay 1 0 and they dominated proceedings a lot. And I don't really have a problem with McAllister playing as the six or the deepest line midfielder, whichever way you want to call it, really, or the defensive midfielder for that matter. But. 
when you're dominating games, that's fine. It's when you need him to be on the turn and to be sniffing that danger and sort of putting out fires that it's just not second nature to him. He wants to be doing some of the stuff I seen last night, which is dribbling around the 18-yard box and making stuff happen from a creative point of view. Um, but as for Endo, mate, I don't know. Possibly. Um, the issue we have is, and you can look at this one or two ways, do you get your specialists in? And I sort of relate it to the season we lost all our centre-backs and for a while we went Fabinho and Henderson as centre-backs because they're good footballers and we went oh they'll be fine and then eventually when it wasn't working Klopp went well I've got two centre-backs there Reese Williams and Nat Phillips they're not as good a footballer as those two but at least the centre-backs maybe we get into a similar sort of territory with Endo whereby he's a specialist defensive midfielder now, he's not a good a footballer, Alexis McAllister, but at least that's what he does. Um, but yeah, well, it remains to be seen what happens there. Like I say, the Endo one's really interesting right now because a lot of people have said that he's got sort of time to settle in and sort of said, well, Fabinho took a matter of months before he got comfortable. Endo's 31. <laughs> I, and there's a good chance we sign another defensive midfielder in a few months' time. So I don't know where he's going to get his football. If he's not playing now in the Brighton game, for example, or the Spurs game, for instance, I don't know where he's going to get his footy. Um, Craig Flynn is back in Costas Timacast to step up. Yeah, I hope so, mate. And again, high-quality footballer. I have no... Tony McAlden says a dislocated shoulder is 12 to 16 weeks. No. Four months for a dislocated shoulder. I think it does very much depend on how bad it was and stuff like that. I can't I can't see it being that long. Um random. Yeah, it's India versus Pakistan tomorrow. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Um skip to my Lou, one of our members here, says they were they were throw Joey in at left back. He's played there before for us. Yeah, he has played there before for us. And I've seen a lot of people talking this morning about sort of the alternatives to go into Timakas at left back. And a lot of the talk was maybe playing three centre halves. I'm playing like a box midfield in front of it. So you get your four midfielders in there. You get McAllister, Gravenberg, Sabozlai, and going about it that way, possibly with an endo, potentially, or Harvey Elliott, who again had a really good game last night for the England under-21s. Um, I don't know whether he's going to he's gonna change everything, to be honest with you. I don't know whether he'll, like I said earlier, sort of throw the whole system out because one key player's gone down injured. I get it, and I understand sort of the logic behind it because you've got your centre arch, you've got Kwanzaa, you've got Matip, you've got Van Dijk, of course, Canate. You have got the options, and Joe Gomez, as you mentioned, to do something there. And somebody else, Tony McCold, and says, Gomez left back for the derby. Yeah, a lot of people are suggesting that. And uh, as much as I've got my misgivings about Costas Timacas, I'm not going to... The pecking order remains Andy Robertson, Costas Timacas, Joe Gomez for left back. It's that really. So I think Gomez had a really good start to the season, by the way. I think he's come a long way from some of his performances last year. I think he has been one of the success stories from the start of this campaign. The fact that he's getting regular football again, he can be depended on again, that's really good. But I'm not in a world whereby I go to Joe Gomez over Costas Timacas personally. Um, Andy Murphy said, up to six weeks out with a dislocated shoulder, according to Dr. Google. Um, yeah, I have messaged um, the brilliant Ben Dinnery, who runs the Premier League injury website, uh, about this, um, and I will hopefully be speaking to him on it, whether it be for a show, whether it be just a quick conversation, because I do want to know a little bit more. Um, Sarah Melling says, if he needs surgery, it's up to six months, apparently. Good Lord. Again, that again boils down to if he needs surgery. There's lots of if buts and maybes. And I imagine and I hope the scan will reveal all when it comes to this. And we can only sort of, like, a, is it a clean dislocation? Sort of a nice clean out, a nice clean in? That's probably the best we can hope for. And then it might mean, like I say, it is a, a handful of weeks as opposed to a handful of months that people are thinking it could be, which is just a nightmare scenario, quite frankly. Uh, Denzel Reddy said, play three at the back with Kwanzaa playing the left side of centre back. Yeah, again, I've seen a few people suggesting that earlier on today. Yeah, Craig Flynn is Forrester home and Luton away. That's right. Yeah, and then we've got Brentford and then Manchester City, which is going to be a half 12 on a Saturday, of course, after the next international break. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? That makes perfect, perfect sense. Uh, Lee Caller says, Timmy should be all right until Robbo's back. And yeah, I think. 
It's interesting that because I agree with you. And Costa Tim McCass can play in any game of football for Liverpool, of course he can, because he's, like I say, he's a seasoned international. He's been around Liverpool for a few years now. He's amassed a decent amount of pims as forwards, and he's had some really good games and some good moments and stuff like that. And the fixture list for the return is actually quite kind. So let's sort of speak positively about Andy Robertson's diagnosis and the prognosis of how long he could be out for and let's suggest he is out for until the next international break which I want to bring up a comment on actually Steve Clark spoke and he said that he doesn't know yet of course but he's optimistic that he could return to the Scotland squad for the next internationals which is mid-November so let's sort of use that as a guide and say that we'll need Simicast for the derby obviously for the Forest game the Brentford game the Luton game he won't play in the Europa League anyway so don't worry about that and it's Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup as well, I think, before Luton. So that as a set of fixtures for Costa Simicas to step into at left back feels absolutely sound. Like none of them are just given three points, of course, and like you don't get that in the Premier League. But if you were to tell me that you're gonna have to rely on Simicas as opposed to Robertson and they're the fixtures, you go, okay, like not ideal but also not the end of the world. Like, if you were to flip them fixtures around and go, it's Man City, Arsenal, you know, Newcastle, Man United, and Tottenham again, for example, you'd go, oh, I don't like that. And it was a Champions League game with Real Madrid and Napoli, for, for argument's sake. You know what I mean? That's that's why I'm trying to see it positively. Um, I think Costas Timacas is 100% of a level to step in and be more than good enough to do a job for us for the next few games, which is why I can see why people suggest him sort of changing formation and working a different way around this problem. But yeah, I don't know. I think Timacas is, is the answer, personally. And Max Brake says for him, Timacas is a better cross than Robbo. Um, sorry, he's going to bring the rest of that up, but there we go. But he hasn't had a proper run of games needed to settle. I hope he does well and gets rid of the doubt. Yeah, I, I don't know about the games. Um because, like I say, I think when Robertson has missed like a little chunk of game, he had an ankle problem at some point, either last season or the season before, and Simicast came in then, and I don't know, he just never never grabbed the game and went, this is me now, don't worry about it, like, no problem at all. He gets by, and he's never, like, necessarily at fault for anything glaring or he's not necessarily really poor and I agree with you set pieces are brilliant I think he's better than Robertson at set pieces but you know when you do get that sniff and the guy ahead of you is out I just want him to come in and go yeah Andy Robertson's done like watch what I do now for a few weeks it just never happened and he might not be capable of it and that's also fine but I don't know it's never it's just never happened um, and Tony McCauld and kind of agrees I guess um, Simicast is a worry start in Premier League games um, God bless him he has a go but he's a mad player he's never off the deck he is a little bit mad um, his facial expressions are an absolute treat when I look at the pictures during the game because we obviously sort of get access to the photos that get used and he's, he's got some mad faces going on his tongue is active um, it definitely is active yeah Denzel Reddy said Japan are playing as we speak they were, I think they were freeing it up against Canada um, last time I seen before I came on uh, that Nakamura scored the third, I think, a lad who plays for someone in Austria, forgive me, completely gone off my head. Um, yeah, Craig Flynn says, Robbo is tough, we should be back within the month. I hope so, mate, like I say, I think if we use that next international break, like Steve Clark was doing, essentially, the Scotland manager as sort of a staging post and suggest that we might miss him for you know, an, an amount of games in these next sort of set of fixtures and then we can get him back hopefully for the next one which includes Manchester City of course interesting uh, Lisa Stewart speaking from experience Lisa she did hers and it's only a few weeks there's an emoji with that I don't know whether that means you're joking or whether that means everything's going to be fine let's hope it's the latter um Mark Dean asked fourth on the ongoing Anfield Road stand delays. Yeah, not ideal. Going to be costing a lot of money, not just in terms of actually building the stand and the infrastructure, but in terms of the loss of match day revenue. Liverpool will have factored in a certain amount of ticket sales and hospitality sales with the Anfield Road being a part of that. Upper, I'm talking about, of course. Um, so, yeah, not ideal. Far from ideal. But what can you do? It's quite annoying. Um it's like I say, it might have a knock-on effect into terms of what we can do 
financially moving forward perhaps slightly but i imagine it'll be caveated with certain things and i know the recent investment from dynasty equity um was part of that was paying for these sort of ground improvements and stuff like that so i don't think it's a huge issue in terms of finances it's more annoying from a fan perspective because i know personally quite a lot of fans who had tickets for upcoming games and stuff like that and it was supposed to be in the annie road upper chris himself was supposed to be in there for one game um but it's not going to happen because that game falls into this calendar year and we now know that part of the stand will not be open for it which is pretty pretty annoying um right last couple of comments on the robertson stuff and then i do want to move on to my next story um bum, 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 bum. oh mary says robbo has been pretty poor recently so a break might be good interesting interesting um and i did actually want to want to bring on a couple of seconds ago um jace9724 just to wrap up the non robinson stuff he asked how long did he guess him was out for no word on it as yet um we're all kind of speculating how long it may be dislocations can be quite complicated or they can be quite straightforward Let's hope it's straightforward. Um, he is going to get that scan today. I've seen lots of different figures from ranging from sort of like three to 12 weeks, essentially. Let's hope it's very much in the, in the first part of that bracket because, like I said earlier, missing him for this little set of fixtures and then getting him back after that next international break in November would not be the end of the world. Now, the next story I want to touch upon comes from Christian Falk, the German reporter for Sport Build, of course. And he tweeted uh, about an hour ago, it was now, saying, according to their information, FC Liverpool, which is a weird way of saying us, um, are interested in bringing Max Abel as sporting director. ex Wolfsburg manager Jörg Schmadke, I don't know why they put his age, fine, is current sports director of Jürgen Klopp and his age. Since June, Bayern are also in talks with Abel. Yeah, somebody mentioned in the chat earlier on that Abel wanted to go to Bayern Munich. <laughs> Listen, he might do. You might be right. I don't know that to be factual, personally. I know Bayern Munich have been interested in him for quite a while. So the fact that they're also in talks is absolutely no surprise. But, yeah, I really want Max Abel to be Liverpool's next sporting director, to put it bluntly. Um, I think Jörg Schmadke, in terms of the job he's done, it's fine. It looks quite limited if you look at where we've bought the players from. Obviously, McAllister comes from the Premier League, but that was done before Schmadke really got in the door. That was a Julian Ward deal. And then I think I'm right in saying all our next transfers from the Bundesliga. So, Gravenberch, the Bosley, Endo, yeah, Bundesliga. So, it, it does look, like I say, quite limited. And he, yeah, he looks like he gets deals done. To a certain extent, obviously the Caicedo and the Lavia scenario sagas would sort of argue that point. But yeah, I think we had a decent summer. The Gravenberg deal at the end helped a hell of a lot. But I will be going for Max Abel in a big way. He obviously left, left RB Leipzig a couple of weeks ago. Um, a bit of a surprise, really. I spoke to Konstantin Eckner, who knows his stuff um, on the Bundesliga and Germany in general, about Abel. And this was at a time when he was still at Leipzig and he was suggesting that Liverpool should be looking at him. He's really good at what he does. He's quite close to Michael Edwards in terms of the way he operates. Certainly a lot closer than Jörg Schmadke is. So he would make a lot of sense. And for me, it just feels like we need... The guy, again, we need the proper guy. Like Schmadke, he came out of retirement to do this job and he's only got a 12-month deal doing it. It was mentioned there in a tweet, it was June where he got the job. So he's only here until next June, sort of at the latest, I guess, because there's been loads of talk about like a clause in the deal that can mean they just break it off at any point. And it just doesn't feel like the perfect fit to me. Now, Jürgen Klopp might think otherwise, of course he might, because it's his guy, he wanted him, he's got him. But I think from a Liverpool perspective, we need that absolute expertise once again, that best in class, gold standard. We all lauded Michael Edwards for the job he did and the ability he had to sort of unearth, like not unheard of, but lads who nobody was really looking at. And he's just gone and got them, got them on the cheap and they've gone on to be superstars for Liverpool Football Club, essentially. And the way we operate... Sell to buy, people don't like it. FSG, people don't like them. But the way we operate, we do need someone with a certain degree of skill 
and a certain skill set in that position. Now, that's not to say Jörg Schmadke doesn't possess any of that, nor is it to say that Jörg Schmadke should leave the club immediately. But I think in Germany, they often have two working together. So if you were to have a Schmadke and an Abel partnership, I would be all over that. Like, that would just be perfect for me because I don't want to get into a position whereby we get to January or even February or March, whatever it may be, and Schmadke goes and Liverpool don't have a succession plan in place because we've done that before. Obviously, we lost Michael Edwards and we had a succession plan, but then Julian Ward, after like no time at all, decided he didn't want to carry on anymore and suddenly Liverpool are left scrambling around for a sporting director. What was so imperative to so much of our success was that everything just ran so smoothly and the operations behind Jurgen Klopp were absolutely fine-tuned and we've lost our way a little bit with that in sort of the past 18 months. And getting someone like a Max Eberl in would get us back on track, in my opinion. Um, but I'll come to some of the comments. Um, yeah, Sarah Melling says, he got fired from RB Leipzig because he pretty much said um, he wanted to go to Bayern. Yeah, I think like Leipzig wanted him to commit his future to RB Leipzig and he wasn't willing to do that because he knew Bayern Munich were interested and he might have had an inclination to Liverpool were interested as well. So he wasn't willing to... To say to Leipzig, no, I'm here for the long term, which is interesting because he did 10 years at Bush and Munch and Glad back before joining Leipzig. And he was only at Leipzig for around a 12 month mark, I think. I might be slightly off with that. So, but I suppose when you are so sought after and you have got the likes of Bayern Munich, Liverpool sniffing around you, are you going to commit to RB Leipzig? Who? Big club you know, manufactured somewhat. The Germans don't like him very much. They're not very well loved in the Bundesliga, let's put it that way. So I don't know about that. You might be right and you might end up going to Bayern Munich. It's mentioned in the tweet that Bayern Munich have also been talks. But like I say, from a, a very selfish Liverpool standpoint, I really want us, really, really want us to get someone of his calibre through the door. And it might not be him, but at some point in the next six to, to eight months, Liverpool are going to need to appoint a high-quality sporting director. We just are. It's as simple as that. Paul Mitchell is leaving Monaco at some point. I think he might have left in the last couple of weeks, to be honest. Possibly him. Whoever it is, we need to do something in that position, like I say, because Michael Edwards so integral to what we did. Julian Ward, for his short stint as well, was so integral to what we did. And Schmadka's fine. Schmadka's got us through. This window in a relatively good shape, I'd say, in terms of the signings we're able to achieve. But longer term, we need the answer. We need the right answer. And I'm not sure, um, Jörg Schmadke, is it um, my call? Um, that, if that is the my call, I'm thinking it is. How are you, mate? Hope you're well. Um, you are very much an Arsenal fan. I don't know any other Arsenal fans call my call, so I'm going to assume it is you. Um, hope you are well, my mate. And I don't know why you're watching a Liverpool chat. I mean, it's me, so why wouldn't you be? Uh, makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, I'll start to wrap up in just a second. Uh, Nakamura plays for France, plays in France for them. Um, they're falling up now, Japan, are they? Yeah. Is Jonathan David playing for Canada? Um, I really like him. Cheers, Ian, for putting me right, by the way. Did he leave Austria then? Did he join them this summer? I could have sworn he was playing in Austria last year, but I could be wrong. Um, I often am about stuff, so that's fine. Uh, let's just have a quick look through the chat, make sure I'm not... Do you know what? Andrew Gore, with a good shout here, didn't even consider him. Um, like to see Luke Chambers get some minutes in the Cup. Yeah, does it, you know what? That Europa League game I mentioned earlier, the Toulouse one, you might see Luke Chambers start that because we're going to be relying on Costas Timakas now for a few weeks at a minimum, really. So we might have to rest Timakas for the Europa League, which might mean Luke Chambers gets to go in the Cup. Yeah, interesting. And we've got the Carabao Cup against Bournemouth as well, like I mentioned. So, yeah, interesting. Um, Ainaz says, the Robbo injury hurts. Got to hope he is at least back for Man City. Timakas will go back up. A lot of games coming up. Yeah, I agree with your mate. Um, let's hope he is back for Man City. That's the big one. That's the big one. Um, T-Man, T-Man 75, um, says at least there's no collarbone breakage, as can often happen with this type of thing. Yeah, again, let's hope it's pretty clean, pretty straightforward, no surgery required, his shoulders back in place, a little bit of rehab, a little bit of strengthen up. He's a tough Scotsman, a couple of cans or bottles of iron brew, however they serve iron brew these days, and away we go. There we go, Ian, thank you so much. I knew I wasn't going mad. He was at Lask, you know what? I wanted to say Lask when I first brought it up earlier on, but then I thought well, he didn't play against us, so I'd have realised, but that's why, thank you, mate. He was linked with, like, bigger moves, wasn't he? Than you know, Reem in France with all due respect, because aren't they the one that 
guy who does the football manager thing, coaches for whose name has completely escaped me, forgive me. I'm essentially just chatting nonsense at this point. Will Will um Will Still is the manager of Reem, I think. Um and he's really sound and boss by the looks of it. Um but yeah, no disrespect to them, but I thought Nakamura was linked with like, you know, proper out and out Champions League royalty clubs, including Liverpool at one point. Um yeah, he is. He is a mank. You're right. Yeah. He's good at what he does, though. If he's like a proper mank and he supports them, then yeah, I'll stay clear. But he is good at what he does. Um, hey, Naz, yeah, Luke Chambers is a great shout. Forgot about him. Yeah, likewise, to be honest with you. Again, not for the Premier League stuff, but for the Cups that are coming up. I think Luke Chambers will be getting some minutes. T Mac, one of our members, one of our Cultura members, I think, as well. Big up the lads. How are you, mate? Hope you are well. Appreciate you getting involved as ever. Ashley Russell says, um, great pen. Ashley Russell in house, I should say. Says, great pen from Darwin. Yeah, it was a great pen from Darwin. And that reminds me, I will quickly sort of wrap up some of the international stuff from last night before I do go. Obviously, Andy Robertson injured. Terrible, terrible news. Um, Harvey Elliott, two goals and assists in a 9-1 mauling from England under 21s of Serbia. And I did want to show you, actually, which I will do now. Joe, you can bring this up because I went on the player ratings and let me just find him. He has deserted me as I say that. There we go. Let me find the game. I'm on sofa score, by the way, so all is fine. There he is. Look, he got a 10 out of 10 on sofa score, Harvey Elliott. Like, what a lad. Um, where's he gone? There he is. Does it give me any more details? Here we go. There we go. Details. So, two goals and assists, like I mentioned. Played all 90 minutes, of course. 9-1 the game was. So, you've got to wonder in terms of like what they were up against and stuff like that, I guess. But 94 touches, 86% pass accuracy, five key passes, three accurate crosses, four accurate long balls, two big chances created, four shots on target, three shots off target, two attempted dribbles, two successful, won four out of seven ground duels, won, he won an aerial duel, ladies and gentlemen, like Harvey Elliott. Um, yeah, the defensive stuff, he, won a, yeah, he made a tackle, he was bothered. But yeah, good game, 10 out of 10. I've never seen that before on Sofa Score. 10 out of 10 rating from Harvey Elliott. What a lad. Um, so, yeah, good news. Like, I'm not saying he's going to start the next game for Liverpool. And if I'm surprised, he started the last game for Liverpool, to be honest. But I really like Harvey Elliott, as you can probably tell. Bad hoodie. Um, but, yeah, boss. Happy days, Harvey Elliott. And the last couple of things I want to tell you about. So you've probably all seen it. You probably all know about it already. Darwin did score that last minute penalty against Colombia with Luis Diaz in the side. 2 2. That finished. And Alexis McAllister, I touched on him earlier as well, had a very, very good game in the World Cup qualifiers for Argentina at the base of a midfield against Paraguay. Um, yeah, he probably starts at the base of Liverpool's midfield against Everton in about eight days' time. And Joel Quanta made his debut for England on 21s as well. Isn't that good news? Isn't that just lovely? Um, dun, 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 dun. I want to pop into Discord just for a second. Howdy, it's David. Says, pretty poor my arse. Losing Robbo is not great. Fortunately, the schedule is Costas friendly. Absolutely. Yeah. I should have brought that up earlier when I was speaking about it, but you are absolutely spot on with that, mate, 100%. And uh, Josek 9926 says, no one is talking about Luke Chambers, at least in the Cup. Yeah, at 100%. I did address that earlier as well, only when I was reminded that he actually exists as a footballer. Um, boss, cool. I think I'm done. Let me just double check everything. Let me just double check in the chat before I do leave you. Um, Jace9724 says I'm going to have to click off this now I've brought it up so I can read it properly because my eyes aren't very good says reading some articles on Abel looks like his end goal might be buying regardless if we signed him he would do a runner with little notice if they came calling and leave us in the lurch again quite possibly yeah and it's interesting um, I spoke when I spoke to Constantine Eckner about this he did say that the buying gig albeit appealing certainly to a German isn't that appealing right now because it's a little bit of a mess behind the scenes there like obviously they're getting things back in order but they lost Sally Hamadic they obviously sacked um, Nagelsmann recently as well and it just feels like a little bit Oliver Kahn left in the summer it does feel like it's not quite settled at the minute so the Liverpool project the Liverpool proposition could actually be more appealing to somebody like Max Abel now I think they also employed the Christoph Freund to essentially the same role as well in the summer he left Frankfurt, I want to say, but forgive me, that could be inaccurate. Um, but anyway, the ba basically the, the gist of what he was saying was is that Abel might look at the Bayern situation and go. Not 
now. And I take the point completely, Jason. Like, we don't want somebody who's going to say, I'll be here until Bayern Munich want me. That's not what we do. Like, that's not how we work anymore. There was a time, maybe, <laughs> where Liverpool might have been that, certainly for some players. But we need to be more than that right now. Um, so, yeah, I take your point. If that is going to be the case, don't go anywhere near him. But if we can get guarantees that he's here and he's here for the long run and he's here to do the best job possible, why not, essentially? Um, yeah, Quanta did get a run out. Yeah, Ireland, Saturday, is it Saturday the Ireland game? The footy. I thought it was tonight. Maybe not. It might be tomorrow. Um, but they're playing Greece, right? Tim McCass, thought so. Um, T Max saw the Elliot performance. Amazing. Yeah, Boss Spirit says Elliot is underrated. Needs to play the forward. Oh, I'm not having him as a winger. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, Craig Flynn's the perfect from Elliot, 100%. Mike Hall, um, same one, I guess. Uh, I feel for McCall's. He's not a six square pegs round holes. Yeah, mate, agree with you there. And he's not, he doesn't look confident either at the minute. It looks like lacking in confidence as if to say, I don't really want to be playing here. Like, he's brilliant as a footballer, but we're definitely not getting the best out of him as a six. There's no, nobody can argue with me against that personally. I won't have it. Um, Star says, put Trent in the six. I don't know about that either. Um, and you'll never walk alone to this. You'd rather play Gakpo at left back than Simicast. Yeah, interesting. Craig Flynn, thank you so much, mate. And I will start wrapping up at this point because I understand I do just talk utter nonsense. Oh, the rugby, yeah, of course. Now it makes more sense. Yeah, the Rugby World Cup um, is interesting this weekend. There's the world, the quality the quarterfinals look fascinating um, I think you'll beat Ireland though mate I do um, I think you'll beat New Zealand rather um, at least you saw the word Ireland as I looked up then and it's not often you sort of go into any rugby game in New Zealand and think you could be favourites but I think Ireland might be favourites so yeah massive um, Wales against Argentina as well England Fiji at the weekend um, and yeah South Africa against France massive huge um, Boss happy days thank you so much Edstone um, Springboks fan there as well everybody thank you so much for getting involved as ever it is massively appreciated um, Andy Robertson let's hope you don't have too long Liverpool go and get Max Abel some international lads did really well Done. Happy days. Thank you again for listening. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, take it easy. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today. <laughs>